The RBA will be buying bonds until 2022. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at the, well, statement from our Reserve Bank Governor, Philip Lowe, about the latest monetary policy decision. And I know no one is going to be shocked that, well, they're they haven't changed the cash rate, guys. For those of you that have been sleeping under a rock, I'll bring up the cash rate right here. Let me just move my microphone. Where do I have it? Here's the cash rate sitting at 0.1%. I really should update this chart, but it's kind of pointless. You know, nothing's changed in a few months, guys. So, yeah. Uh, but the interesting thing here is that, you know, buying of government bonds will continue until at least Feb 2022. There you have it. So... At its meeting today, the board decided to maintain the cash rate target at 10 basis points and the interest rate on exchange settlement balances of 0%. Maintain the target of 10 basis points for the April 2024 Australian government bond, purchase government securities at a rate of $4 billion a week, and to continue the purchases at this rate until at least mid-February 2022. Prior to the Delta outbreak, the Australian economy had considerable momentum. GDP increased by 0.7% in the June quarter and had nearly 10% over the year. And by nearly 10% over the year. But here's the thing, everyone. GDP isn't the best measure of an economy. Now, if we go back to the GFC and if we look at our growth in GDP over that time, since the global financial crisis, and if we factor in the pop population growth in Australia, our growth has been, we've been growing, but it's been below trend. So we've been growing by less and less and less. You know, it's not that good. Most of the growth since the GFC has been below trend. Some would argue that's a a depression. An economy growing for a prolonged period of time, depressed, below trend. Business investment was picking up and the labor market had strengthened. The unemployment rate had fallen below 5%, and job vacancies were at a high level. The recovery in the Australian economy has, however, been interrupted by the Delta outbreak and the associated restrictions on activity. GDP is expected to decline materially in the September quarter, and the unemployment rate will move higher over coming months. While the outbreak is affecting most parts of the economy, the impact is uneven, with some areas facing very difficult conditions and others continuing to grow strongly. I was bringing up... uh, an excavator today asking for a, a you know recommendation of, of a painter or or a uh, what was it a, a concreter because I'm having trouble finding people guys because everyone is so busy everyone is flat out I was on the phone to a painter now two months before he can even look at anything and I'm I'm telling him is that what you expected at our first recession in 28 years this is what happens when government gets you know, a big jerry can of economic stimulus and pours it on the housing market. It just goes nuts. This setback to the economic expansion is expected to be only temporary. The Delta outbreak is expected to delay but not derail the recovery. As vaccination rates increase further and restrictions are eased, the economy should bounce back. There is, however, uncertainty about the timing and pace of this bounce back and it is likely to be slower than the er- than the er- than earlier in the year. Much will depend on the health situation and the easing of restrictions on activity. In our central scenario, the economy will be growing again in December and is expected to be back around its pre-Delta path in the second half of next year. So that's the middle one. That's not the best case scenario. That's not the worst case scenario. That's the middle case scenario. Now, remember, we were looking at some of their modeling for housing, and they were testing the impact of a 40% decline on house prices, you know, a couple of years ago now. It didn't eventuate. It was just one of the scenarios they tested. So they throw a few economic scenarios there and see what's going to happen. Notwithstanding the strong economic and labor market outcomes pre-Delta, wage and price pressures remain subdued. Over the year to the June quarter, the wage price index increased by just 1.7%. House prices are continuing to rise, although turnover in some markets has declined following the virus outbreak. Housing credit growth has picked up due to stronger demand for credit by both owner-occupiers and investors. 
Given the environment of rising house prices and low interest rates, the bank is monitoring trends in housing borrowing carefully, and it is important that lending standards are maintained. Very accommodative financial conditions will continue to support the recovery of the Australian economy. Borrowing rates are at record lows, sovereign bond yields are at very low levels, and the exchange rate has depreciated over recent months. The fiscal responses by the Australian government and the state and territory governments are also providing welcome assistance in supporting housing and business balance sheets. The board's decision to extend the bond purchases at $4 billion a week until at least February 22, reflects the delay in the economic recovery and the increased uncertainty associated with the Delta outbreak. The board will continue to review the bond purchase program in light of economic conditions and the health situation and their implications for the expected progress towards full employment and the inflation target. These bond purchases, together with the low levels, low level of the cash rate, the yield target, and the funding that has been provided under the the term funding facility are providing a substantial and ongoing support to the Australian economy. The board is committed to maintaining highly supportive monetary conditions to achieve a return to full employment in Australia and inflation consistent with the target. It will not increase the cash rate until actual inflation is substantially within the 2-3% target range. The central scenario for the economy is that this condition will not be met before 2024. Meeting this condition will require the labour market to be tight enough to generate wage growth that is material, materially higher than it currently is. So there we go. How And how is the media reporting on this, everyone? I've got some, a breaking news email from a mortgage broker I, I spoke to years ago. I'm on his mailing list. So whenever the Reserve Bank does nothing, <laughs> it's breaking news, Reserve Bank does not adjust the cash rate. Let's have a look here. This is from Yahoo Finance. What are they, he- what's, oh wait, no, that's a different article. What's their headline here? RBA releases September interest rate call amid sinking economy. Okay, the economy is sinking. doesn't sound like it. They're pre- RBA is predicting we'll recover in the December quarter. So the RBA of Australia has, has left the cash rate unchanged at point one, faces worsening outlook on all fronts and potential recession. Now, none of that was mentioned. <laughs> none of that was mentioned in their art, in their, their note there at all. And there was some discussion of us facing a potential recession, but uh, we, we haven't hit one, everyone. If we had have had a recession, this last quarter would have, the latest data should have been negative. Eve, December, we're going to have to have, you know, we'll have this one quarter and the next one, they'll have to be a recession. So, yeah, I think that's a bit of, bit of a jump there. And how is ABC, how they're reporting it? This is interesting. Banks slash variable rates, even as the Reserve Bank stays firmly on hold. So banks are cutting rates again. You know, lenders have slashed variable rates to attract new customers in the booming pandemic property market, even as the Reserve Bank keeps official interest rates firmly on hold. And this is a marketing strategy that some of these banks are doing to try and attract clients and customers. It's competitive. This is good. This is what you want. Guys, this is what you want. You want competition. You know, and so many people are going out there and are remortgaging. We've heard stories from viewers where, you know, they got one deal from one bank, another deal from another. So what's the, well, what's the solution or the takeaway to all of this, guys? Well, here's the thing. They're going to continue bond purchasing until 2022. Uh, they're predicting that the economy will recover in December quarter. Or oh, start to you know, pick back up again. And they're going to keep doing all of this. We'll have to see if 2022 is the end of the bond purchasing or if they kick the can down the road further. What's going to happen, guys? It's really all unknown. We don't know how the different states and territories are going to be able to contain the Delta if it's going to spread, and you know, even if we hit these vaccination targets, will they open up the economy or won't they? I think it's all going to play out at the next election cycle. The next federal election is going to be the one to watch. And, you know, the, the RBA is just going to sit by the sidelines. So what's your best situation? How do you work this, guys? Well, develop a diversity of income streams and learn how to be cheap just in case you see it ready if it all goes down the toilet. What do you think? Really, we're just along for the ride, to be honest. I would love us, I'd love Australia to experiment with some different approaches to economic management. 
or maybe a bit more of a free market, you know, some, maybe something even more exciting, maybe having multiple central banks competing with multiple currencies, but that's way too out there to even, even contemplate on the public level. Let's just hope we, we don't go down that MMT path. Let's just hope we avoid that, although you know, we're pretty much seeing how that will play out. You know, more expensive housing, of course. As always, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Paths from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.